Don't let your electronic devices kick your butt. Let Chuck Fresh, the PC GYN, help you get in control of your computer skills. Here's Chucky with Computer Care Clinic's Tip of the Day. Chuck Fresh, the PC GYN, with Computer Care Clinic's Tip of the Day. Now, we get this question a bunch of times a day. People ask us, well, I'm in the market for a new computer, but... What should I get? The guys at the big box store tell me I should get this, I should get this, I need to upgrade this. But what do I really need? Well, the answer to that question is based on what you do. What do you do on the computer? Some people may be fine with an ARM processor and a tablet. If you're just doing some Candy Crush and some uh, email and Facebooking and you don't create any content, then you probably go with a tablet or a smartphone or even the lowest rung of a a laptop computer if you want to do any real printing or uh, data entry because it's still kind of awkward to enter data or type on a touch screen device. Um, they haven't figured that out yet. It's not tactile. There's uh, Bluetooth keyboards and uh, wireless keyboards you can hook up to these things, but they're still awkward and the keys are kind of small, so they haven't figured that out yet, but it's coming. So what you do, if you're a person who needs to do some real work, if you need to type letters, do spreadsheets, if you're doing uh, any type of video or photography editing, then you're still going to need a fully functional computer, either a laptop or a desktop. Uh, really, as far as the power goes, they're all about the same now. You can get the same power in a laptop as you can as a desktop. The desktops tend to last a little bit longer because they have more ventilation, more room for heat to dissipate. And as we all know, heat is the number one killer of electronics. And also, laptops are portable, and anything that's portable can and will be dropped eventually. It's much more susceptible to damage. So. Now, when you're making that decision, all right, I've decided I need a laptop or a full computer. You've got a whole range of processors to choose from. Now, the big players are Intel and AMD. There's some other outliers, too, but those are the big guys you're going to run into in the big stores. Salespeople are going to talk you into all kinds of stuff you probably don't need. So the first question is, what do you do with a computer? Well, if you're just doing email, some text documents, writing letters, maybe doing some uh, Facebooking, um, maybe some scrapbooking, yeah, some limited gaming, I'm talking Solitaire, Candy Crush, those kind of silly games, then all you need is the basic Intel i3 processor. You can even go lower than that, but to future-proof yourself, get yourself the Intel i3. They seem to be a little bit more reliable, a little bit more fast. Uh, I've seen some very, very fast computers with i3 processors and as little as 2 gigs of RAM. Things just smoke everything else. It just really depends what you do and how they're configured. So if you're just doing real basic tasks, you're not doing video editing, you're not doing uh, Photoshop, you're not doing any three-dimensional gaming like World of Warcraft or um, Call of Duty. If you're not doing any of that kind of stuff, the other one that's real big too is uh, Sims. Sims requires a bunch of processor uh, cycles too. So if you're not doing that kind of stuff, stick with an i3. It should have more than enough power. Now, these processors, they're very, very little and they're changing all the time. Um, I've got tons of them. People give us their old processors when they're done with them. And, um, there is a recycling market. It's just a couple of bucks a pound now. So don't throw them away. Don't pollute your environment. There's all kinds of toxic metals in these things. But uh, they come and go every couple of months. They change the entire process. They make them thinner, smaller, more powerful. So uh, that's why I'm mentioning future-proofing yourself. So if you go with an i3, you have two cores, two solid cores, where it used to take two processors. Now they kind of combine them into ones. You've got two processors in one, which is actually essentially a dual core process, able to run two streams of data, two streams of processing through them simultaneously. So the i3 has those two cores, and that's really all you need for all intents and purposes to, if you're an average computer. Now, if you're going to do the video editing, you're going to do the three-dimensional gaming. You're going to do Photoshopping with multi-layers and raw files and giant poster-sized things. Then you might want to step up to the i5, which has four cores, or even the i7, which has even more cores. Six cores, I believe, is the i7. I don't even fool around with them. I really have no need for it. Personally, I do video editing. I do Photoshopping. I do all kinds of things that you shouldn't be able to do on an i5 on a four-core i5, and it's just fine. Uh, I really think it's more power than most people will ever use. So if you're a little afraid of not having enough power, just bump up to the i5. It's maybe $30 to $50 more. You don't need the fastest clock speed, just the average i5's run-of-the-mill processor that they're offering in most computers, and you should be fine. The other consideration is memory. 
Um, I've got business class users who are running fine with an i3 core, a core i3 Intel processor with two gigabytes of RAM. They're doing internet surfing, they're watching YouTube videos, they're doing um, word processing and email, and they're fine. The thing's flawless, it's fast, they got their antivirus loaded. No hesitations whatsoever, but most of the big box stores will try to talk you into six or eight gigs of memory, which most of the computer, the uh, consumer computers come with. So do you need six to eight gigabytes of RAM? No, you probably don't. You're probably okay with two to four. If you're nervous about it, if they got you all on edge, then get yourself four gigabytes. And I promise you, for most average users, that's going to be more than enough. Again, if you're gaming, photoshopping, doing video editing, you may want to opt to six to eight. I've got six gigs on mine because video editing is very demanding. There's a lot of throughput and it tends to go a little bit faster when you render special effects if you've got a little bit more memory. You can even go up to 16 gigabytes, but again, that's depending on your motherboard and how much memory your processor can handle. The fourth generation Intel i processors, the core processors, can handle up to 16 gigabytes, but look at the specs to make sure and make sure you've got the right memory. Chuck Fresh, the PCGOIN, this is Computer Care Clinic's tip of the day.